So, guys, thanks for being here. Our guest today is Kim. It's her second yeah. time here. So, we have new questions, new things to discuss. But before we start, Kim, for those of, uh, who hadn't had a chance to watch your first uh, class, can you just uh, tell us a little bit about you, your background, when you joined real estate, and when you joined EXP? So, we're kind of on the same page, and then we can go ahead with the questions. Yeah, so um, I've been licensed since 2015, um, and I actually started with Century 21, and I was with them for a really long time, um, and then it's just been the last, like, two and a half, three years. It's been almost three years I've switched over with EXP, um, so yeah, I mean, is that kind of, like, in a nutshell? <laughs> it's, yeah, so, that's about it. I mean, really. You, I can in how long? How long it took to you, like to cap and then I can. Oh, to cap and I, yeah. So, um, so I just iconed. That was actually my first year that I iconed this last time, um, and I, I think it only took me like three, four months to actually like cap then icon just shortly after that. So, mm -hmm. but honestly, before that, I wasn't even near the amount of like production that I am now. So over at Century Twenty One, it wasn't even close. Got it. So and was this one of the reasons that you joined? Was it the icon since you're now doing this kind of production and then you I continue first year? Yeah. Well, so I mean, because I think you kind of hit a point like in your career where you realize like you're just not getting the resources that you need to grow and scale. Um, and so when I actually switched over to EXP, it wasn't ever really about the splits. I didn't care how much I paid, um, to be honest. I just knew that wherever I went, they had to have the resources that I needed to scale and grow. So, um, and then the idea that you could like icon and get your cat back, I was like, oh, okay. So I'd be like a hundred percent cool. <laughs> and it was like a total gamble. Um, I actually went from having like a $12,000 cap to doing 16. And so I just kind of held my breath and was like, whatever, we're going to try it. And it worked out really well, but yeah, it's like, it was resources. Like you got to have resources to scale and grow. That's yeah, what you need. Definitely. So. So since yeah. it's your second time here, uh, we're kind of going to life after iconing. So that's how I'm calling that. Just came up with that. Uh, because we want to know, uh, you already shared with us in the previous call, uh, your path to iconing, what you did and how you organized yourself and, you know, how you got your deals. But then after you iconed, uh, what comes next? Do you have like... And he goes, okay, after I kind of going to start doing agent attraction or I'm going to take a family vacation or did you had a plan and how it was for you after you reached the goal? Yeah, so I guess, you know, once you reach a level where you're starting to really scale and growth, I feel like there's a lot of momentum now um, behind the business that I have and what I was trying to build. And I think that was the wall I was always hitting before is, you know, there was always a ceiling. You could never get past it. So um, obviously I Haunting, it's now opening a lot of opportunities for us to start looking at scaling and growth. Um, so bringing agents in, obviously, within our local team, but then knowing that now we have systems and strategies in place um, to teach others how to scale and grow, that's a really big part of it. So it's fantastic that we can actually take these resources and put them nationwide, actually international, if you really want to go that far. But um, yeah, I mean, the next steps really are implementing like the growth stages. So, um, and actually I'll have to say the growing pains um, haven't been as painful as I was thinking they would be because they have been in the past. Um, so yeah, like it's, it's actually been pretty incredible seeing, I guess, just the progression that we've been able to make with the resources that we have and everything is so smooth and streamlined now. It's fantastic. So definitely bringing in agents. We need a lot of agents right now for our local team, especially, but yeah. That's awesome. That's nice to hear about the growing things. That's a yeah. different and refreshing. Um, so right now at what stage you are? So you, I can't, and then uh, when, when does your year uh, ends and then starts a new one? Uh, how many months do you have? Like when, where exactly are you working right now? Yeah. So, um, honestly, so our, so my anniversary year is, I think it's March is where I start over. Um, and I mean, so it took me a little bit, the beginning of this year was a little bit slow, like coming out of COVID and it was just odd and weird. But then of course we had the boom, like everyone had the boom. 
Um, and so there was definitely an influx of people coming in. So um, I actually think as of right now, the deals that we have closed once they close out will be totally capped. Um, and that's both me and my husband. So um, we have our team set up. So he kind of, we're not actually the husband and wife team. We don't use the 8,000 or whatever, yeah. you know, that we share. Um, so he's capped. So he's got his 16. I've got my 16. And so uh, after we probably have another month, month and a half of production, we'll probably be right at where we need to be for our net sales to Icon again. So it's actually kind of cool because this time he's like right along with me. Um, so are you, you know, I, Icon? Yeah. Really? Yeah, we will. That's amazing. That's, yeah. that's incredible. Okay. Yeah. And we, we debated on like how we wanted to structure it. Like, did we want to do the husband and wife thing? Yeah. But I was like, no, we can do this. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, you just that much more back. Yeah. yeah, definitely. That's awesome. Wow. Yeah. That's so cool. That's yeah. Awesome. And he was kind of probably jealous of the trophy I got. So he probably of needs it. Of course. Yeah. Know. Yeah. You got to let him have it. So, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yes. That's great. Guys, uh, I'm, I'm asking questions, but you can go ahead and, and mute yourself and ask anything you want to know. You know, this space is really for you guys to learn how, how to get there. Um, so that's actually nice that you touched uh, on the point about being a husband and wife team, because I think that's uh, the part where people are like, uh, should we go for that or shouldn't we because of capping and then uh, iconing. So how did you guys uh, got to the point where, okay, we're not doing husband and wife team, so we can both, uh, I can, how, how was the process for you? Um, so, I mean, initially, I guess we had gone back and forth for a while. So my husband has been with EXP. He's in his second year. I'm in three. Um, and we went back and forth a lot because I thought, you know, I mean, if he wasn't iconing, it's a lot of money. Um, but I think that's just where we decided to function as an unofficial team. And it actually worked out really well because now his, he can build his team under him. I can build my team under me. And then in terms of like how our revenue share and everything works, it actually, it does make it more lucrative. So it, it made us have to work better together, I guess, um, and help each other grow in our own businesses. Um, Cause you know, he has to have the production. I have to have the production. Um, and so we just said, you know, like, let's try it and see if we can. So I figured when we decided that we were going to give it like a year or two and see if we could do it. And so now we're um, like year two for him and we did it. So um, it's also kind of like a, a test for us to kind of say, okay, like if we can amp up our business, you know, what would we, we be able to do for the agents underneath us or even agents that are in other states um, using these systems and models um, that we've been implementing in our business. And it's, it's been really good. So it's kind of cool to actually see, um, you know, when you put in some hard work, like it actually pays off. Um, so it's been cool. It's been really awesome. And so can, okay, I have about a handful of questions. It'll probably take up the rest of this call. So I'm going to try not yeah. to do that because I would love to know. Oh. So <laughs> I'll try to, if anyone else, please jump in and cut me off because I just am curious about this because we do get asked a lot of times, you know, like with a husband and wife team. So how do you guys structure your KV core, your systems, your branding, um, like I, I, how does that work for you guys? What did you decide? Okay. So the way that we have it set up and actually we're trying to work with KV core on trying to see like ways that maybe we can integrate some things where we're not an official team, basically what we mm -hmm. have. So my husband serves the way that we have it. He has, he's a part of one MLS. I'm a part of another. So gotcha. our systems are completely separate, yep. but we also have like the most expansive team in our mm -hmm. state. So yeah. because we can cover so much area. So the exactly. way that we've been working it is he kind of takes his side. I take my side. Um, so it takes two leaders instead of, mm -hmm. you know, one. Exactly. Yeah. But, yeah. But it works. Okay. So, but the KV core thing, I will have to say there's some kinks we're trying to work out and like yeah. bringing in smart numbers and whatever. So I think that's part of just like the growing pain, but we have, you know, yeah. we're working with them and trying to see what they can do. So. Yeah. Um, I, I could probably help you with that if you want to set up a call. Just we don't have to go through that yes. with the smart number and the two domains and stuff. Yeah. Let me know. Okay. I, I think I have a workaround for you. Perfect. Yeah. But, okay. Does anybody else want to chime in? Because I could keep going. I like to um, ask, I didn't get what your production numbers were and what your husband's were. 
So last year we were at like 16 million in production. So, and then, and also factoring in, so our um, average sales price in our area is probably quite a bit lower than what it is in some of the other areas. Now that's completely changed because your average sell price is now like 400 plus. Um, but leading into that last year, it wasn't, we were probably closer to like the high twos. So, um, so your total units sold was more, but volume was around 16. And we're probably on track to double, if not go a little bit further than that this year. So. Okay. That's, that's about the price range for, for our area too. Um, what um, I did, I don't understand. I just was reading up on the icon and everything just recently. What I don't understand is the transactions after you cap. Um, do you pay that uh, fee on like referrals and things like that? Like what considers a transaction once you cap? Um, so, and Christy, you might be able to correct me if I'm wrong, but I, so if we send a referral out and we just receive the fee, I don't know if that counts towards your transactions. I think it's your units you actually close. Yeah, it's units and is, you also have to pay in, so it's units, but then also you have to pay in the $5,000 within, you know, the $250 um, amount. So I know you, when you do, so if you send out a referral, a, any type of referral, whether it's a referral or a split between you and another agent, um, if it's if you are sending that referral out and you're getting paid 25%, then that means you're only going to pay 25% of that $250 fee, ODEXP, um, the ICON fee. Um, so then it's not considered a full transaction. So it does count towards it, but it's just a, you know, a quarter of it. So you'd have to yeah, do four really referrals cool. to make up one full transaction, if that makes sense. That does. That's what I was looking okay. for. Okay. Yeah. And then the other thing that, so with all the, you know, you'll pay those fees and you have to pay those fees in order to qualify to, icon, you know, and get your cap back. Um, but you can also, if you don't want to absorb those fees, you can charge a transaction fee on the file and then it basically takes that out at the end of the year you're making money um mm -hmm. after it's all said and done but yeah so there's ways to kind of around that yeah absolutely um and even leases as long as you're paying in x amount of dollars towards the company i think it's 1250 dollars is the minimum owed to the company as long as you're paying in to the company um you're going to get you know your money back or you're going to pay towards the cap or um iconing and you'll get you know, the icon, the awarded, but any of those deals that you don't pay on, like pay anything on that, that deal's not going towards icon or capping status. That's the easiest way to kind of remember it. Um, when, when, when you're trying to figure it out. Christy, you can go ahead with your questions because I'm curious what you want to ask. Well, she actually really summed it up really quick. I thought it was going to take a lot longer. So it didn't, it wasn't the whole thing. <laughs> But I guess we so, didn't really have answers. I, guess, I was like, oh, I know. yeah, we're working on it. Yeah, I guess we could go kind of more into it. So then um, with your, the way your, you and your husband are, are split, you said, so when you guys, you know, put it in Sky Slope, you guys are both capping. So how are you guys capping, like kind of piggybacking off each other? Are you doing like a 50-50 split or, yep. you know, so, okay. we decided that was after, I mean, because I don't know how many different scenarios you look at, like, you know, how are we going to get there the fastest? And and then there yeah. is like a percentage that you lose off of them when you do the 50-50 split. Yeah. They're just, um, but yeah, so it gets us there at the same time. Um, so we do 50-50. So I help him on his transactions. He helps on mine. Um, you know, and of course we have like admins mm -hmm. and stuff that help, but yeah. yeah so it's, of course. it's the 50-50 split ended up making the most sense in terms of getting us there, capping and iconing the quickest. So, oh, okay, cool. Because no, I'm not going to go into that. That's confusing. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm just trying to, I want to visualize it and, you know, see it. Um, so that's kind of cool. You guys are both doing your own thing. So like you're completely separate agents, but helping each other. So yeah. do, you, do you guys each have your own brand? Like yeah. So that brand? was a really okay. weird thing. So I was licensed, I mean, for years leading up to before I even met my husband, um, he was actually my FedEx guy. <laughs> so, oh, that's awesome. <laughs> so 
I already had my business. I already had a brand and people already knew my name. Um, and even like getting married and like changing my name, like I really struggled with him. Like, oh my gosh, yeah. my, my identity, my brand. Um, and so we tried to keep it separate for a while. And I just thought we were just were losing the branding altogether. Like yeah. I, you know, yeah. lost the name, but and now it was just, it was all mucked up and it didn't make sense. So mm -hmm. we decided to just clean the slate. And so we rebranded um, and already the rebranding has gotten like a ton of attention um, so it just made sense to kind of clarify it because your consumer doesn't, you know, it's too much. Like there's a million agents yeah. already. And mm -hmm. so to try to like group those people together with two different brands, two different sides, yeah. it never, it didn't make sense. I mean, yeah. I guess it was me not wanting to rip the bandaid off to be like, okay, you can have part of my business. <laughs> <laughs> That's but, so funny. That's but funny. He closes just as much as I do. So it really yeah. is a team effort. So yeah. yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Cause, and I'm asking, cause I know when, like when Dwayne came over, once he got licensed, um, yeah. you know, he was, he, they're, they're set up just like you where they're, they're, you know, working together as a team, but they didn't take, go the traditional, you know, husband and wife team with an EXP. They did, they're both individual agents. Um, and, you know, right off the bat, he wanted his own logo, his own brand. He's got his own KV core, all of his own stuff and signs and did, you know, we spent a few months like creating this brand for him and I'm thinking to myself I'm like she's already got a brand a really good brand like come on but you know we all have to learn our own ways and um you know kind of figure it out and I'm like I feel like we're working against the grain if it'd be you know maybe I don't know then one night finally they're like Christy let's give Dwayne a GoGo's real estate email address and we're gonna you know make it the GoGo's real estate team and I'm like yes thank goodness because like, it's just, way, let's do my, that. <laughs> yes you see it yeah but it's and it's hard and I get it I you know from both sides and you know some men it's their egos and some men can put it aside and you know if their wives yeah. already have the the brand and um I just think it's it's awesome and I love to hear everybody's different stories and how they you know what they're doing to see how it works um because they you know it definitely can work either way so it's it's really cool to see how everyone's uh you know, going about it, but it, it just makes it a lot easier when you just piggyback off the brand and just, just do it, just do it. Yeah. You just do it. And just you, you, sometimes you have your idea of, of how you think it's going to work, but I guess that's just like, that's just navigating the path of growth and yeah, deciding absolutely. it's really scalable. And, mm -hmm. and I guess from our standpoint, we just looked at it and we were like, look, what's going to simplify what we're trying to advertise for the consumer? And you're yeah. just going to have to get out of your zone and go, okay, look, it has yes. to make sense to them because they're the ones that are going to call us, right? Yeah, so, exactly. So yeah. that's what it really came down to. And it I love was, it. we honestly, we designed the new logo in probably an hour. We threw it on and within a few days, we already had signs going. Like it was, nice. it was ready to go. Yeah. So, Perfect. It was really that's so cool. cool. Good, good. That's really cool. That's cool. I like yeah. to hear so, the journeys. I have yeah. a question. So from what you've shared, it seems that you had a pretty clear goal that you came to Icon and you know what you had to do. Uh, and that was your first time Iconing, right? Yeah. So yeah. the second time, what are you doing different? Uh, or what are the things that are like, man, I'm not going that way. I know that this is going to take me so much time that I'm going to be stressed. I'm going to do different. So um, how would you compare like I can do for the first time and now when you're doing for the second time, what are the things that you did different or that you tried, you know, new approach? Yeah. So, I mean, honestly, I think so. I, I think sometimes agents, businesses, whether they do good or bad or whatever, especially when they're doing good, um, it's a weird thing to say, but sometimes like good businesses with realtors, they just happen. Like sometimes it's mm -hmm. by luck or like you just had a really good year or you got enough referrals um, or you got a really big referral for a $2 million house or something. And that really launched you just that year. And so I didn't want to be an agent that just had, maybe that was my lucky year. And then I just didn't go any further. So for going into this next year, honestly, to, to speed up the progress, because I mean, it was just get there as fast as you can. So, you know, you're done and you're, your icon. Um, mm -hmm. It was really implementing certain disciplines in our day-to-day -day lives, um, time blocking, um, and just staying committed to what we're putting on our calendars. And that's actually, I've been kind of listening to all the other icons. It seems like that's like, everyone's like, live and die by your calendar, right? And yeah. so that yeah. really is the 
thing. Um, so, I mean, it really is like setting goals, tasks, looking at what you need to accomplish for the day, the week, um, the month, the quarter. Um, so that was one thing leading up to when I iconed that I started to realize like I wasn't paying enough attention to the numbers that I needed to hit. Um, I wasn't diving into weekly goals, daily goals. Um, and that really, whether you're setting lofty goals or just average goals, it's just you looking at your numbers and paying attention to what you really should be doing. Um, and based off of that, it tells you, you know, okay, I got to make more calls. I've got to go like meet more people. I've got to network. I've got to do, you know, and then you can kind of pivot and decide, okay, I'm not hitting my goals. What do I need to do? And, and kind of problem solve it that way. But definitely time blocking is a huge one um, for sure. And just staying disciplined with that. Yeah, that's awesome. That's exactly what Kara shared with us last week. Time blocking people. You've got to learn how to do it. Um, you just have to do it. Yeah, definitely. So this is something that I, I always ask everyone that comes here. Uh, do you remember like the moment that you iconed, like that you realized that you hit the goal? Like how was it? Or was something that you wasn't really paying attention to your numbers just happened? You're like, oh, I'm an icon. Do you remember how was that? Like how was the feeling? Yeah. So um, I actually, it was a really weird situation. So when I iconed, um, I had a couple of transactions that weren't like officially closed out with EXP. So I had actually iconed like back in October <laughs> and I had no idea. I think it was October, November, something like that. And then I got the notice like in January or something, January, February. And they're like, oh, you iconed. And I was like, yay, just in time. And then I looked at my numbers and they all popped up and I was like, oh, I way iconed. Like I was already there. So um, had I known a little bit sooner, I mean, I guess I was still trying to aim to icon. It kept me like really hustling towards the tail end of the year. But um, but yeah, I actually icon long before I actually uh, knew I icon. So, but wow. it was, it was very exciting. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Because I mean, it was way before you imagined. So because yeah. that's high, because that's nice because you keep going towards the richer, the, the, to reach the goal, just like I got to do one more, one more, one more, one more. And when you see yeah. the way I can, so for yeah. this year, you just had, um, so your, your anniversary is in March, right? You, you have to start your year in yeah. March. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. And are you capped already? How are you on the path to Icon? Um, yeah. yeah. So the the existing transactions that we have that are just closing out, that will have both me and my husband um, capped. And so uh, with, with what we have in volume in the next month and a half to two months, probably, that really does put us right at where we need to be um, to, to be able to, to Icon. So this year was... I, I mean, it was a crazy year for a lot of people in real estate. It was a hard year. It was a good, good year. It's just kind of a, you know, up in the air. Um, but we, yeah, we were really disciplined in trying to make sure that we were hitting some of the goals and whatever. And um, we were excited this year. We're excited to be able to icon together and have that be something that, you know, that we just accomplished. And it's cool to see that you implement systems and they work. It, it's yeah, been really good. Sure. So this time after I can uh, pull attention on agent attraction, vacay, what's coming next, this icon price? Yeah, so, um, you know, we really would like to be able to get more agents in our organization. Um, it's been absolutely incredible being able to be a part of like what GoGo has created and then being able to take our resources and do the exact same thing and offer them to people. Like I said, it's been cool to see that we we set out, you know, a map of how we were going to accomplish a certain amount of volume and that we're hitting that. Um, so it's going to be, I guess the next little bit is really, we would like to focus on being able to take those strategies and systems and offering those to people that are, you know, wanting to be business partners with us. And um, it, that's definitely a huge one for us. Um, and then a vacation would be great if I could ever <laughs> put stop working for like a day or two. I could I could probably go on vacation. Yeah, you have to add to your calendar and then commit to it. Yeah, I can block it out. <laughs> yeah, guys, we have three more minutes. Does anyone has questions? Amber, Jessica, Tina, Matt, do you guys want to ask anything? If yes, please go ahead and unmute yourself. We cannot hear you. I just, I just like to say, um, um, so I just joined back in at the end of April. So um, 
when I was at my previous brokerage, I would do the same thing like you. I would be tracking my numbers. I would be doing those things. And then I did get that lucky year and was thinking, okay, this is how it's always going to be. And then when I stopped doing what I began doing in the beginning, it started to fall apart. And it's like, oh, no, you really have to get up. You really have to go to work. You really have to be there every day. So I learned that the hard way. But then this year, well, when COVID hit, all of a sudden, I was not interested in tracking my numbers. I wasn't interested in doing anything. But then I just so happened when everybody, after the scare initially, everybody's like, okay, we got to hurry up and do real estate. And then it was like, okay, here's another lucky year because I was doing nothing. I was kind of, I was getting up every day, but I wasn't, I didn't have a plan. I didn't track my numbers. I was just thinking, well, this is just, um, you know, it's a strange time. I don't know what to do. I'm just going to go with the flow. And then that is when I really got to sit back and like, look at my business and say, okay, it's time to make a change. And so this COVID was not a good thing. It, the pandemic definitely wasn't a good thing, but it was good for me to be able to get some time to look at what I was doing and making the change so that I can get back on track. So I'm glad to be here. And I mean, I literally have been working from the time I got here, basically trying to get everything set up because I'm also moving to another state. So I'm like, when I get there, I'm going to hit the ground running because I got everything set up. But it's good to hear your story because it, it is inspiring for sure. Yeah. And, you know, honestly, there's a lot of agents. We had new agents that we had brought on during COVID. Um, and I mean, the level of discouragement that they felt and, and it was hard. Like, how do you tell people to go out and network when, you know, you can't even go door knocking? You can't like you can't have human contact. And so it was a it was a year where we really had to pivot. And, and you're not alone in that. Um, a lot of agents felt a lot of discouragement. And I, um, you know, even us, we hit moments where we were like, I just I guess we just stay in our house all day. I guess that's just what we do, you know. And so, yeah, but it, it was good in the sense if you took advantage of the time to just dive into it and kind of reformat, rebuild, pivot and see what you can do in your business. Um, because yeah, like you have a good year and it doesn't mean that that's going to happen in years to come. And I think that's a misconception that a lot of agents have, um, that that was maybe just a lucky year. And that was always a big fear of mine that I, uh, I didn't want to just be the agent that had a lucky year. So um, it definitely takes work every day. You're so right. Just got to gotta go. Yeah, one day after the other, just keep going. Yep. Okay, guys, so I want to respect everyone's time. It's already uh, 1.30. I keep forgetting what time is it, it is because it's not 1.30 for me, so I just have to think. It's actually 2.30. <laughs> uh, so, Kim, thank you very much. Um, any last uh, tips that you would like to share? Any words of encouragement, you know? Whatever you wanna you wanna say. It's, it's oh me or them? Yeah, yeah, you. Oh, it was like <laughs> I was like okay, whatever. Yeah. I was asking you if there's any any other things that you like to share. Yeah, I mean, I guess just for anybody that's trying to like build their their business and start out new, just know it's just a, it's taking action every day and setting goals. And sometimes you're not always gonna meet those goals. You're gonna have a lot of failure. Um, even people that are trying to rebrand or grow, or if you are trying to bring on agents, um, there's just growing pains and frustrations with it. So I guess uh, don't get discouraged. It's just showing up, honestly, and just keep doing it. But pay attention to your numbers, though. That's a big one. <laughs> That's a good one. And yeah. where can people find you? How can they reach out to you? Um, you can find me on my Facebook. I guess I can just tag myself or whatever on this. Um, yeah. yeah. That's it. And you can message me, whatever. Facebook then. Well, thank you very much, Kim, for, for sharing with us a little bit of your icon. And thank you, thank you guys for being here. I will see you tomorrow at 1 p.m. EST for Wednesday training. Have a nice day, guys. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks. <laughs>